there dolly friends i am working today on this little bunny toy box that i would like to turn into something that looks a little more or less victorian it seems like some things of that era were made from inexpensive wood or paper mache even and then painted or lithographed on top of it and I wanted to give a similar look to this little toy box. I really love the using paper on items and using paint, especially darker colors of paint. So I have some ideas of what I want to do to this, but I want to make it look like, you know, the children's father, or in this case, mother, which will be me, um, have made this for them. Uh, by hand and that's exactly <laughs> what it's going to be because that's what I'm doing of course I didn't cut the shapes of the bunny um, I'm just sanding off the graphics that were on there I just found some images online that I liked and I scaled them down and printed them on my regular printer and then just cut them out. I roughly drew some lines uh, across the bunny to indicate planks because I want to make it look like the toy box was built um, by someone using wood and I can see that my markings are not quite right um, so I'm going to redo it. I'm just going to mark the bunny size on this paper and then fold it to get the measurements for the four planks. But you will see as we go on that all of this is a futile effort. <laughs> That's good enough. And then I'm going to fold it in half. So there's the middle and then I'll just fold it in half again on each end to get the measurements of my four planks. There you go. What I'm planning to do is score the lines so that there will actually be a texture in the wood as though it was built from pieces. And then I'll just draw some planks and I want to go to the inside and the back as well. So I'd like, I'd like to take my bunny apart before doing that. I think it will just make it a little bit easier. And I learned from watching Shira at Queen City Minis that what she does sometimes is she puts it in the microwave or uses a blow dryer or a heat gun. I think for this little guy, he, I've never done it before. Uh, I think using a heat gun, which I don't have, might be a little intense. And a microwave, well, I'm just too lazy to walk over to the microwave, so I'm going to use my blow dryer. Taking too long. I'm gonna go to the microwave. On the fifth round, so a total of 50 seconds, the rest of it came. But you can see that it splintered a little bit um, in this area, but I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I'll just sand it down. Turn my light on, which I know isn't optimal. So I'm just going to sand these sides down and you don't really need to watch that. I'm scoring it all with my X-Acto knife, kind of making a little groove out of it rather than just a straight line to make it look like planks. 
and I'm going on the sides and the back to make it look realistic. But once again, keep watching and you'll see why it was probably kind of a waste of my time. But I do like the way it looks. It did give the look that I was going for. I just used an emery board to sand it a bit. Perhaps you've noticed that I'm wearing a band-aid in this clip and I wasn't in the clip before. So you can deduce how that happened. I did the front, back, and sides, but I'm going to leave the bottom plain because I think that's how probably someone would make it. You won't be seeing that and would just use a whole piece of wood. I'm going to stain the pieces because in my mind, I'd be making this out of probably something that was already an old piece of furniture or something that had already been stained or used for something else. So I'm repurposing something to make this for the dolls. So I would think the wood would already have a little stain on it and I wanna layer the coloring. And I quite like the way this looks, and maybe I ought to have left it like that. But I was also thinking of the paper mache look and the lithograph look. So the next step that I'm going to be doing is covering these pieces with some tissue paper. And I've just repurposed some tissue that I just tore from the minimum world order that I had a while ago. And I just wanna do this to give it a little bit of an aged look. Maybe this toy box was made and then painted and I really wanted to layer the look, layer the look and the colors. But in doing that, in doing that layer, even though initially, the tissue paper, you can still see the texture of the wood planks. You couldn't see it later. I will say the adding the tissue paper gave exactly the effect that I was looking for. You know how some of the old Victorian glove boxes were wood and then had a paper mache on top of it and then a lithograph on top of that? I was going for that look. So I'm trying out some colors here. I wanted a yellowy color, but I added a drop of red and it just came out orange. So I decided against that. I'm just using a, a yellow ochre here, just an acrylic right out of the tube. And by the time I do one piece, really the other pieces have dried. I probably should have waited, but I was just too excited and I just kept painting. So I really didn't put many coats or anything like that on it because I knew I was going to be layering. So the next day I decided that I want it, it dried a little bit darker and I wanted it to be just a little bit brighter. So I added, added a little bit of plain, just regular old yellow to the, yellow ochre and I painted it again and it gave just that little bit of more mustardy look to it and it does dry a little bit darker so I'm really happy with the color and the way it turned out and I'm doing another color on the edges on the borders so that's why I'm not really coloring that. Even though you see the bottom piece painted yellow, my intention was to paint it black, but I just wanted to see how it might look if I did paint it yellow. A 
I wanted the edges of the piece to be a dark, dark, almost black green color. So I'm mixing this dark green, which is like a forest green with just a tiny bit of black. And it gave me exactly the color I was hoping to get. I ended up doing two coats, I think, on that. While those are drying, I wanna show you what I was doing to the edges of my cutouts. I used this tiny little gray ink pen. It was just one of those pens I think they give kids at, the rest, at a restaurant. And I'm just going along the edge of the cutout so that there's no white. And if you use, um, depending what kind of pen you use, it might bleed just a little bit onto the front of the paper, which is actually desirable. So I was really happy to do that, and I actually almost forgot to do it. I did that when I made the little Valentine cards. If you didn't see that video, um, I'll put a link to that one. In the meantime, I made some little mistakes because I was too impatient to let my paint dry. So I am going to use my paint eraser, which is of course just sandpaper, to get rid of those and touch it up a little bit. But you probably wouldn't have to do that if you were patient and let the paint dry. I've heard that Victorian houses should be painted with a minimum of three colors, so I thought I would do the same on my toy box. I wanted the bottom to be red and black because it would be worn on the bottom of the floor and on the inside where the toys are hitting up against it, so it would look pretty raggedy. I'm so excited to begin gluing on my bunny image here. I'm just using Mod Podge, of course, and I've just doing little by little. I debated whether to do a glossy, but I always get a little bit carried away and I'm kind of glad I didn't. A satin might have been good. Don't worry, that is not blood on my thumb that you see, it's just some red paint. I don't need another Band-Aid. I'm going to wait to glue the images for the front and back until after I piece it together. I want to make sure they look the way I'm hoping they'll look. My brain got very confused when I was trying to put it together. Even though I had marked the front and the back, I didn't get the orientation right and had to do it again. I'm using Fabric Tac glue which is actually really great because it grabs right away, um, doesn't make too much of a mess, but then allowed me to change everything when I realized I got it all wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I muddle through and, and get it correct in the end. I'm happy with the way it turned out, even though you don't really notice the planks. I wanted it to be, you know, I really wanted it to look like this is something that's been around, it's probably been redone, it was probably plain at one point and then decorated, and something that's really maybe been handed down. I decided that I wanted the cute little image on the back, and I'm not sure why, but it just seemed that just seemed right to me. So I put the flower in the front and I put the girl riding the bunny on the back for some whimsy. It turned out very close to the image I had in my mind. And I think it looks like something that's been around in the nursery for a long time that uh, the parents someone made, maybe grandma or grandpa, in this case, grandma made for the kids. 
and it's been rejuvenated off and on over time. Uh, I think it's the perfect scale for the dollhouse and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I hope that you liked it. I know you saw it in my doll's house cleaning video. If you didn't see that, you can go back and check it out, but I think it'll look even nicer when I put some flooring and some wallpaper in the nursery and get everyone back in there in their cradles. Thanks so much to everyone who's watching, especially those who have subscribed, left a thumbs up and commented. Join me next time to see what I'm doing in the doll cupboard.